Are we on? Am I live? Let's see if I can turn the camera around for a second. Look at that. Blue sky. Blue sky all around in my foggy car here, but I'm happy to say, I'm ecstatic to say, live from sunny Sacramento, California. It is, it has stopped raining for a while. And maybe for a long while. Or, uh, we don't want to, we don't want to drought, but, uh, the rain has stopped. Uh, but much damage has been done here. Uh, Cal in California, over 20 people have died in these, uh, uh, freakish, which will be the new normal, I guess, uh, weather, weather patterns here. Uh, many, many trees down here in Sacramento. Levees have broke and many, uh, uh, areas of Sacramento have been, uh, uh, evacuated and floods and things like that. But uh, other parts of uh, California have really had it, uh, uh, you know, much, much worse. But anyway, thank you for all of your, your concern and your well wishes. And, uh, but the, the lake futility in the backyard is starting to go down. <laughs> and, uh, oh, anyway. And I just barely made it to uh, Sprout's parking lot here. Constance is in there uh, doing doing our uh, Tuesday shopping chores. And I'm ready to talk to you today about uh, the art card, or the in other tarot decks it's called the temperance card. And I'm going to read something from uh, the Fifth Aether, of the vision and the voice, Crowley's vision of the fifth aether, which concerns uh, the art card, Sagittarius and the arrow. But just as a reminder, this is, if I can see what I'm seeing, this is an image of the, the art card, the old temperance card. Now, if you look at the very bottom, this is the, uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me, that's the lover's card. Here's the art card. And if you look at the bottom of the art card, you see a red eagle and a white lion. Okay, now eagle is a, is a female uh uh, lunary uh, symbol, and the lion is a solar uh, uh, male uh, female or figure. The eagle is usually associated with uh, uh, female, the lion, the, the male. Now, those same two characters appeared in the zodiac, see, this is Sagittarius, 180 degrees away, directly opposite in the zodiac is Gemini. And the eagle and the lion appear in the Gemini card too, or the lover's card. But the eagle is white and the lion is red. Okay, they're the same uh, eagle and lion, but they've changed into their opposite nature. It's an eagle with uh, the, the solar qualities and the, the lion with the moon qualities. So these are, represent two aspects. Oh no, I don't want to do, drop this in the wet car here because it's a valuable little tarot deck. Oh, the trials and tribulations of Okay, let me try it off. The lover's card is the solve section of the alchemical process of solve et coagula, or solution, 
and then coagulation. And, okay, there's an alchemical process. Now we're going to talk today. I'm going to get this good and dry before I set it out here. If you'll excuse me, I digress. Crowley wanted us in our meditations on the art card to read or study this vision of the fifth aether that he had on the desert uh, with Victor Newberg. Uh, this was uh, on December 11th, 1909. And it's in two parts, okay? It's one of the only aethers, I think, where, the, where he had a vision, and then the angel said, okay, that's it for today. Come back tomorrow, and we'll finish this off. So that's what's going to happen here. But this is called the arrow. Okay, and it's concerning the art card. Now, I don't hope you can see this. I uh, I scratched it out there in the parking lot of the Natural Food Co-op. But I wanted to show you where the arrow is on a tree of life. It goes from nine to six. And it pierces that the rainbow sort of... Uh, uh, practice abyss called the, the Veil of Paraquat, Para, Paraquat, <laughs> Paraketh, uh, that separates the, the lowest section of the Tree of Life to the, to the midsection. Okay, it's like the, the, the abyss before Adeptus Minor in six. But anyway, that's the arrow. And that's the arrow pointing up that he's going to be talking about here. But there's another arrow uh, that he's going to be talking about. And that's the one that is going, the downward pointing arrow that he's going to talk hey, about that hey. goes from number four to number six and then down the tree. So it's a, it's a downward pointing arrow. And they're both, he's both talking about them uh, in reference to the Hebrew letter Yod. But that might be made clearer in just a moment. Are you, are you still with me? The arrow. Now then, behold how the head of the dragon is but the tail of the aether. Many are they that have fought their way from mansion to mansion to, to the everlasting house, and beholding me at last have returned, declaring, Fearful is the aspect of the mighty and terrible one. But happy are they that have known me for who I am, and glory unto him that hath made a gallery of my throat for his arrow of truth, and the moon of his purity. The moon waneth, the moon waneth, the moon waneth. For in that arrow is the light of truth that overmastereth the light of the sun whereby she shines. The arrow is fledged with the plumes of the sun whereby she shines. The arrow is fledged with the plumes of Ma'at, that are the plumes of Amun. And the shaft is the phallus of Amun, the concealed one. And the barb thereof is the star that thou sawest in the place where was no God. And that's capital N and capital G. And of them that guardeth the star, there was not found one worthy to wield the arrow. And of them that 
worshipped there was not one found worthy to behold the arrow. Yet the star that thou sawest was but the barb of the arrow, and thou hast not the wit to grasp the shaft, or the purity to divine the plumes. Now therefore is he blessed that is born under the sign of the arrow, and blessed is he that has the sigil of the head of the crowned lion, and the body of the snake, and the arrow therewith. Yet do thou distinguish between the upward and the downward arrows. For the upward arrow is straighteneth in its flight. That's that upward arrow. It is straighteneth in its flight and is shot by a firm hand. For Yesod is the Yod tetragrammaton. And Yod is a hand. But the downward arrow is shot by the topmost point of the Yod. See the little point there at the top of, a, of every Yod? And that Yod is the hermit. And it is the minute point that is not extended, that is nigh unto the heart of Hadith. And now it is commanded thee that thou withdraw thyself from the vision. And on the morrow, at the appointed hour, it shall be given thee further, as thou goest upon thy way, meditating this mystery. And thou shalt summon the scribe, and that which shall be written, shall be written. Therefore I withdraw myself as I am, <laughs> excuse me, as I am commanded, the desert between Ben Surur and Tolga, December 12th, 1909, midnight. And I'm taking that as that's the, the beginning of the, the next, the next uh, day's vision. So I'm interpreting that that took place on the, the 11th that we just read. <coughs> Here we go. Now then art thou approached unto the august arcanum. Verily thou art come into the ancient marvel, the winged light, the fountains of fire, the mystery of the wedge. But it is not I that can reveal it. For I have never been permitted to behold it, who am but the watcher upon the threshold of the aether. Now I'm going to <coughs> digress for a second uh, concerning the the nature of the, the, the narrative of, uh, of these visions. The visions don't, st usually they start off by uh, uh, a section, a paragraph, a page uh, of just the beginning of the vision. It's almost like the vision is, is you have visions that get you into the, to the real vision. So it's like, you know, well, I closed my eyes and, and clouds appeared all over the place and well, those clouds aren't aren't the aether themselves. Those clouds are are uh, the, the the membrane that has to be peeled away to to reveal the uh, the adventures that are happening in the aether itself. So so a lot of times the the opening words of each of these uh, uh, aethers is just the preliminary, just the as the credits are rolling, okay. as the clouds are peeling away and it becomes clear. So, uh, that's what's happening here, is at least as far as I can see. So, who's ever talking at first? It's not I that can reveal it, 
for I have never been permitted to behold it. Who am I, I who am but uh, the watcher upon the threshold of the aether? My message is spoken, my mission is accomplished, and I withdraw myself, covering my face with my wings before the presence of the angel of the aether. So the angel departed and bowed his head, folding his wings across. And there is a little child in a mist of blue light. He hath golden hair, a mass of curls, and deep blue eyes. Yea, he is all golden, with a living, living vivid gold. In each hand he hath a snake, in the right hand a red, and in the left hand a blue. And he hath red sandals, but no other garment. And he saith, Is not life a long initiation into sorrow? And is not Isis the lady of sorrow? And she is my mother. Nature is her name, and she hath a twin sister, Nephthys, whose name is Perfection. And Isis must know of all. Excuse me. And Isis must be known of all. But how few is Nephthys known? Because she is dark, and therefore she is feared. But thou who hast adored her without fear, who hast made thy life an initiation into her mystery, thou that hast, cast neither, that hast neither mother nor father nor sister nor brother nor wife nor child, who hast made thyself lonely as the hermit crab that is in the waters of the great sea, behold, when the cisterns are shaken and the trumpets blare forth the glory of Isis. At the end, therefore, there is silence, and thou shalt commune with Nephthys. And having known these, there are the wings of Maut, the vulture. Thou mayest draw to an head the bow of thy magical will. Thou mayest loose the shaft and pierce her to the heart. I am Eros. Take then the bow and the quiver from my shoulders and slay me. For unless you slay me, thou shalt not unveil the mystery of the Aether. Therefore I did as he commanded. In the quiver were two arrows, one white, one black. I cannot force myself to fit an arrow to the bow. And there came a voice, it must needs be. And I said, no man can do this. And the voice answers as if it were an echo. Nemo hoc facere potest. Or facere I don't know. We'll get a translation. Nemo is no man. And so it's sort of an echo of what he said. No man can do this. Then came understanding to me, and I took forth the arrows. The white arrow had no barb, but the black arrow was barbed like a forest of fish hooks. It was bound round with brass, and it had been dipped in deadly poison. Then I fitted the white arrow to the string, and I shot it against the heart of Eros. And though I shot with all my force, it fell harmlessly to his side. But at that moment, the black arrow was thrust through mine own heart. And I am filled with fearful agony. And the child smiles and says, Although thy shaft has pierced me not, although the 
envenomed barb hath struck through thee, yet I am slain, and thou livest in triumphant. For I am thou, and thou art I. With that, he disappears. And the aether splits with a roar as ten thousand thunders. And behold, the arrow, the plumes of Mott are its crown, set about a disc, and the Atef crown of Thoth. It is the Atef crown of Thoth, and there is the shaft of burning light, and beneath there is a silver wedge. I shudder and tremble at the vision, for all about it are whirls and torrents of tempestuous fire. The stars of heaven are, are caught in the ashes of the flame, and they are all dark. And that which was a blazing sun is like a speck of ash. And in the midst of the arrow, Oh, excuse me, and in the midst, the arrow burns. I see that the crown of the arrow is the father of all light, and the shaft of the arrow is the father of all life, and the barb of the arrow is the father of all love. For that silver wedge is like a lotus flower, and the eye within the atef crown crieth, I watch, and the shaft crieth, I work, and the barb crieth, I wait, and the voice of the aether echoeth, it beams, it burns, it blooms. And now there cometh a strange thought. This arrow is the source of all motion. It is infinite motion, yet it moveth not, so that there is no motion, and therefore there is no matter. This arrow is the glance of the eye of Shiva. Because it moveth not, the universe is not destroyed. The universe is put forth and swallowed up in the quivering of the plumes of Mott, that are the plumes of the arrow. But those plumes quiver not. And a voice comes, that which is above is not like that which is below. And another voice answers it, that which is below is not like that which is above. And a third voice answers these two. What is above and what is below? For there is the division that divideth not, and a multiplication that multiplieth not, and the one is the many. Behold this mystery is beyond understanding, for the, the winged globe is the crown, and the shaft is the wisdom, and the barb is the understanding. Do you recognize the, the supernal triad titles? The winged globe is the crown, the shaft is the wisdom, the barb is the understanding, and the arrow is one, and thou art lost in the mystery, who art but as a babe that is carried in the womb of its mother, that art not yet ready for the light. And the vision overcometh me, my sense is stunned, my sight is blasted, and my hearing dulled. And a voice cometh, Thou didst seek the remedy of sorrow, and therefore all sour, all sorrow is thy portion. This is that which is written, God hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. For as thy blood is mingled in the cup of Babylon, so is thine heart, the universal heart, 
yet it is bound about with the great serpent, the serpent of delight. It is shown, excuse me, it is shown, he's shown this time, it is shown me that this heart is the heart that rejoiceth, and the serpent is the serpent of Da'af. For herein all symbols are interchangeable, and each one containeth in itself its own opposite. And this is the great mystery of the supernals that are beyond the abyss, for below the abyss, contradiction is division, but above the abyss, contradiction is unity. And there could be nothing true except by virtue of the contradiction that is contained in itself. Thou canst not believe how marvelous is this vision of the arrow. And it could never be shut out except the lords of vision troubled the waters of the pool. <laughs> in the mind of the seer he's having a little trouble here he's losing it but they send forth a wind that is the cloud of angels and they beat the water with their feet and little waves splash up they are memories for the seer hath no head it is expanded into the universe a vast and silent sea crowned with the stars of night Yet in the very midst thereof is the arrow. Little images of things that were are the foam upon the waves. And there is a contest between the vision and the memories. I prayed unto the lords of the vision, saying, O oh, my lords, take not away this wonder from my sight. And they said, it must needs be. Rejoice, therefore, if thou hast been permitted to behold even for a moment this arrow, the austere, the august. But the vision is accomplished, and we have sent forth a great wind against thee. For thou canst not penetrate by force, who hath refused it, nor by authority for those thou hast trampled it under foot. Thou art bereft of all but understanding. Thou that art no more than a pile of little dust. That's what you call a master of the temple in number three, understanding. He's a pile of, little pile of dust. And the images rise up against me and constrain me, so that the aether is shut against me. Only the things of the mind and the things of the body are open unto me. The shoe stone is dull, for that which I see therein is but a memory. Quite a trip. The fifth aether. Okay, tomorrow, yesterday I misspoke and said we'd finish uh, the appendix section. There's one more short uh, uh, comment on uh, the Trumps that Crowley wants us to uh, uh, consider in the appendix, and that's the universe itself. It's short, it's incredibly beautiful, and... Uh, I look forward to sharing that with you tomorrow. So I hope you're still with me. It looks like my my phone is still working here. And uh, uh, I hope you have a great day, a nice dry day. And until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.